common factor questions. Now GCF, that stands for greatest common factor, and when you look at an equation like this, you see something that's in common and you're going to ask yourself, okay, what do the terms have in common? Uh, they got to share something, right? And sometimes they do. So for example, if I have x squared minus 5x equals 0, I know for a fact that these two terms both have an x. And whatever they have in common, you can take outside of the parentheses when you factor. So I can take an x out, but once I take that x out, I'm going to be left with something inside the parentheses when I get done with it. So I'm going to have something inside here, and everything is still set equal to zero. So I've still got my equal zero on the right side. And now figuring out what goes inside the parentheses here is the next thing we're going to do. So I just took out x. I know that this has two x's, and if I already took out one x, then I need one more x to go on the inside. So that way, when I multiply these back together, I get x times x, and that's going to give me that x squared that I have right here. Okay? And now, what sign is in the middle? I have a minus sign, so I'm going to bring that down. Okay? And now, I'm trying to get back to 5x at this point. I've already taken out an x. I just need a 5 to go right here. And now I'm done factoring. So now this is composed of two factors. My first factor is going to be x. That's on the outside. That's called my GCF. My GCF. But then on the inside, I have the second factor, x minus 5. So now I do what I normally do. I take both of my factors, and I set them both equal to 0. So I should get two equations at the very end. I'm going to bring this down, and I'm going to set that equal to 0. And then I'm going to take this right here, and I'm going to set that equal to 0. So I get x minus 5 equals 0. Okay, so now I have two different equations I need to solve. But actually, this one is already solved for me. See how x is already by itself? That means that I don't even need to mess with this. It's done. I just need to solve this one. So to get that negative 5 out of the way, I can add 5 to both sides. And when I add 5 to both sides, the x is going to come down. The negative 5 and the positive 5 are going to cancel each other out. And then 0 plus 5 over on this side is going to give me 5. So now I have two answers, 5 and 0. And I can put them inside my solution set. So I know for a fact that these two numbers will work. If I wanted to check my answers, all I would have to do is just plug them back in for x. So let's check the 0 first. We're going to check x equals 0, because that's the first answer that I got. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take the question that they gave me originally, and I'm going to bring it down here. So I have x squared minus 5x equals 0. All right, so now I'm just going to let x be 0. That means that everywhere I see an x inside the problem, I can put in a 0. So I'm going to replace this x with a 0, putting it inside parentheses, and I'm going to have a minus 5 and I'm going to replace this x with a 0. And then I have equal 0 on the side. Okay, so I hope this works. I know that 0 squared is going to be 0 times 0, and that's going to be 0. And then I bring down my minus sign. 5 times 0 is still 0, so I'm going to have a 0 right here. And I still have my equal 0 off to the side. And then 0 minus 0, that's going to give me 0. So I get this true statement at the end, which means that this number is going to work for this equation. Okay? Now let's check the 5. Let's let x be 5 and see what happens. So now we're going to check the second solution that we got, x equals 5. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the original equation that they gave me, so I still have x squared minus 5x equals 0. And then what I'm going to do is, everywhere I see an x inside here, I'm going to replace it with a 5 inside parentheses, so I don't get confused. So I'm going to let this x be 5, and I'm going to let this x be 5. 
but everything else is going to stay the same. The minus is going to stay the same, the 5 is going to stay the same, and the equals 0 is going to stay the same. Okay? So 5 squared, I know that 5 squared is going to give me 25. So that's just going to become a 25. And then I have a minus sign that I need to bring down. 5 times 5 is going to give me 25. And then I have equals 0. So the last thing to do would be to subtract these. 25 minus 25 indeed does give me 0. So I get this true statement at the end. So I know that 5 is going to work inside my solution set. And that's the way you solve quadratic equations. Uh, when you have a GCF, just take it out and then see what you have left after that.